In 2011, Codemasters produced the best F1 game in the series. Oh no, wait a minute. No, he didn't. It was the worst. Well, for PS3 anyway, if you discount F1 2014's Mario Kart style handling, it's F1 2011! Hello everyone and welcome back to the complete guide. Now, straight away let's go into the online aspect of this game. Now unfortunately if you haven't played this game for a while or you're trying to free up some space you do accidentally delete the VIP pass which you have to have if you want to play this game online. And unfortunately it was very very difficult to work out how to re-download it because it's not in your downloads folder and you actually have to go to the place where you're going to buy it and then it says, oh, you've already bought it, would you like to download it? Which I did, but unfortunately, I couldn't persuade anyone to join me online, so I waited. So it looks like no one plays F1 2011 online anymore. Okay, we're going to go straight into a quick race. We're going to go into the Williams and we're going to be Rubens Barrichello. Okay, now who remembers this? The longest loading screen in the history of man. Oh my god, that was so long. Anyway, as the cars sit on the grid, it's time to say go, go, go once more for the F1 2011 season. But before we start, we're going to check and make sure the most important thing is there. Have they got the sound just right? Yeah, I have to say it sounds pretty good for those glorious engines of 2011 as we go to the first turn now and I've gone round and spun round like a noob. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll skip over that bit. So as the cars go round, it's time to tell you some more about the game. F1 2011 is a video game created by Codemasters based on the 2011 Formula 1 season. It is the sequel to the 2010 video game based on the same series. The game was released in September 2011 on the Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 platforms, and in November of 2011 on the Nintendo 3DS, and in February of 2012 on the PlayStation Vita. It has sold 3.5 million units worldwide. The game engine is based on the new Ego 2 engine, an unofficially titled evolution of the Ego 1.5 engine that was created specifically for the title. All 12 teams and 24 drivers that started the 2011 season are featured in the game, although mid-season driver changes did not take place due to licensing restrictions. The entire calendar of 19 circuits from the 2011 season is present, including the new Buddha International Circuit in India. Certain circuits also feature day to night transitions. At E3, Codemaster announced that the focus of F1 2011 is to be the driver, live the life and go and compete. Online multiplayer now have a maximum of 16 players in a race, with the option to include an additional 8 AI controlled cars. A split screen multiplayer mode is also implemented and also an online cooperative championship. In August 2011, Codemasters announced that the safety car would be implemented in the game following its absence in F1 2010 and that it would be available in races longer than 20% of the real race distance. Red flags are also included for situations where the safety car cannot get around the track, but not for extreme weather conditions. Rule changes for the 2011 season included KERS, DRS and the Pirelli tyres which are also featured in the game. 
features of the game include a career mode in which the player makes a driver and simulates the driving experience. Another mode is the Grand Prix in which one picks a professional driver and creates a Formula 1 season. There is also a Proving Grounds mode which is a time trial to compete against other players around the world. Early critical response was positive, with reviews praising improvements in handling and AI and the way the new rule changes, in particular the CURS and DRS, added an additional layer of strategy to the game. IGN remarked that the differences in using these features helped separate qualifying and racing into two separate gameplay modes. So how do I feel about this game after all these years? Well I think this was the first misstep for Codemasters. Unfortunately in F1 2010 there was a lot of complaints about the fact that you could spin out all too easily and I think Codemasters came up with a very quick fix to a problem that was a lot bigger than they first thought and that quick fix was to make sure that you had to have the wings up so you could catch it into the corners. Now unfortunately this meant that you had to drive most of the circuits with high wings so for most people they ran the wings with a 6 on the front and an 8 on the rear and this made absolutely no sense because in F1 2010 you could quite easily online get away with 1-1 one, one wings and you could also do the same in F1 2012 so why not this game? Well I suspect that during its development they had quite a few problems with the handling model and this was the quickest fix that they could come up with. Anyway, on to the positives and for F1 2011 they did actually manage to get rid of that horrible yellowy brown tint to the uh, graphics and the background and thankfully it does look more like a proper Formula 1 game as compared to F1 2010 and of course the graphics, well they seem to be pretty much the same as 2010, just a few improvements but overall it's more like a evolution more than a revolution for this game. So we move on to the Proving Grounds feature which was new for 2011, which was basically a time attack against other people around the world and your objective, you had quite a few scenarios, I think six scenarios in total, but I think after you completed those it did unlock a few more if my memory serves me correctly. But the objective of course is to get gold, silver or bronze and you've got your coveted place on the worldwide leaderboard. 23,996. Well done, Dave. Okay, on to the Monaco test once more as the five lefts go out. I am as Lewis Hamilton. No, don't hate me. Don't hate me, please. And it's away we go, of course, in the McLaren as we go into turn one. Let's have a look and see how we do. Oh, my God. A little bit of pinballing as we go up the hill. And look at the glorious graphics, as you can see. They are absolutely beautiful. And I'm getting pinballed by the car next to me. I don't believe it. I think that's Mark Webber. I think that's Mark Webber. As we go down the hill now into the casino section of the Glorious Monaco, is it going to be a clusterfuck or are we going to go? Oh, sh oh shit. Um. <clears throat> anyway, so we managed to uh, negotiate that corner quite reasonably this time, as you can see. Oh shit, no we didn't. And I've hit the wing off, but luckily only half of it this time, so I've decided to carry on, as you can see. Oh dear, oh dear. Anyway, there's plenty of room for everybody. Plenty of room, no problem whatsoever. As we go through the tunnel now, let's see, is it going to be... Oh, shitty bollocks, I've just been punted off by Mark Webber again, I don't believe it. We go through the tunnel though, and it, yes, it's okay, it's, it's pretty dark, but you can see where you're going at least. Okay, so let's get into the meat and the potatoes of this game, which of course is the career mode, where you start as a rookie, work your way up through better teams, and hopefully, one day you will become the Formula One World Champion, yes. So let's do this. 24 drivers in F1 2011, don't forget. Thank you, Mr. Loading Screen. Are you ever going to load? It's auto saving. I don't know what that means, but it's auto. Oh, here we go. It's Catalonia, and we're here for pre season testing. Now, of course, you can see a Ferrari truck there, but I don't think we'll be starting our career in a Ferrari. No. Oh my god, it's Crofty. It's David Croft, and there's a very, very creepy cameraman right behind him. Oh my goodness, he looks well creepy. Anyway, so he is on hand to ask you questions before you start your career. So we put our name in, as you can see. We uh, input our nationality and where we're from. Of course, Europe, and of course, we're from Spain. And who are we going to drive for? Well, we're going to drive for, I think, HRT, of course. Because being Spanish, we have to drive for a Spanish Formula 1 team. So that's what we're going to do. 
And this, of course, now is the difficulty level. Of course, not a lot of people knew this when they first started out, but yes, it starts as easy, amateur, uh, hard, I think, and then bloody hard, I think, is the last one. <laughs> Something like that, anyway. So there we go. We've selected our difficulty now. It's time to start our career as Mr. David Croft carries on waffling in the background. I don't know what he's saying. We're not really interested. All we're looking at is the very, very creepy cameraman in the background. So HRT signed Carmen Jorda. According to a new post on the HRT website, Colin Coles has revealed that they have signed F1 newcomer Carmen Jorda as a driver for the forthcoming season. This year's Formula 1 Drivers' Champions is a number of drivers joining the racing elite. I can't read that. It's going too quickly. Formula 1's new rules. A new rear wing system called DRS which can be used during practice and qualifying and under certain circumstances during the race. Oh my goodness. So here we are then. This is our um, trailer and there are the circuits for 2011. Let's go through them. You had Australia, Malaysia, China, Turkey, Spain, Monaco, Canada, Europe, the United Kingdom, Germany, Hungary, Belgium, Italy, Singapore, Japan, South Korea, India, which of course was the new circuit, the United Arab Emirates, and Brazil. Let's have a look around our trailer here, that's the exit, and there's our laptop, which if we go into our email screen, that will welcome us with all the information. I have to say, this looks very much like F1 2004 on the PlayStation 2, if anyone remembers that game. Very similar layout to um, that career mode, but there you go, we get all the emails that we're going to need throughout our career mode season. So we go on to the standings, of course Carmen Jordan is in 22nd yet because we haven't actually started. And also you can have a look at information and stats about the track you're just about to go on to. Now onto the helmet now. Once again I think there's about 24 different helmet designs, of course nothing like the way you can change the actual colours on F1 2016. But uh, quite a good selection nevertheless, I think we're going to select the purple one, I think that I've just gone past because that's what we need. Nice selection of bubbles for Kami. Let's go back and select the, select that one then. Here we go. That's it. Helmet number eight. For Carmen Jordan. Fantastic. Okay, so that's pretty much about it. Oh, let's just have a little spin around and see what else we got in our trailer here. Let's go. Oh my god. Oh we got a we got a sofa. We've got a sofa, we've got a ceiling, we've got some clothes hanging up as you can see. Looks like a trophy cabinet over there, we can put our trophies in when we win them. And there's a mirror! Oh my god, that'll be well uh, handy for Carmen Jordan when she needs to do her selfies on Instagram. Oh, you look fabulous, darling. Absolutely fabulous. Okay then, so uh, we could sit on the sofa, but I think it's time to go out on track and start our career mode in the glorious HRT. So let's have a look at the race settings now. You can set the camera, it's on near chase at the moment. I always like to put it onto the uh, TV pod. You can have your participation level at a long race weekend or a short race weekend. Of course, that will give you only one qualifying session. Race distance can be three laps, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 75%, or 100% race distance. Of course, 20% will bring out the safety car and you do pit stops. Difficulty can be easy, medium, hard, expert, or whatever. Also, you can fine-tune some of those settings if you just go into it there. You can see you can have the braking assist on or off, ABS, traction control, dynamic racing line, gearbox, pin assist, all the things you need for a Formula 1 game. And also the simulation options as well. You can have rules and flags as realistic or reduced. Tire simulation can be on, fuel simulation, the car damage and the AI difficulty can be on legend and the flashbacks you can have as many as you like if you just put that in. Okay then. So it's time to start our career. Here we go into our car. Lovely little bit of animation there. Well done Codemasters. And here we are in our car. This is the uh, engineer menu as you can see and the famous quick car setups which if you can't be bothered to set up the car you can just select from one of the seven presets which I think he's up from F1 2010 didn't he only have five presets I think it did okay so there you go if you can't set up the car just select a preset 
So let's look now at the timing and information screens and it also gives you our car setup screen as well as you can see Carmen's order. This is only a practice session but there's all the other drivers on the screen. You can also get information about the practice and qualifying times by just clicking on it. Of course no one's gone out yet so we've got no times but they do appear underneath there. Also we then go into the track info which gives you lots of information about the track you're going to go onto. The research and development of course as you go through the season you develop new paths which go onto the car and sometimes they actually fail as well but uh, yeah so you have a balanced path at the moment so you can of course have intermediate aggressive but that is decided by the team you've got no actual uh, say in changing that path at least not at the start anyway as you can see there's the front wings at 6 6 because that was basically how we run it we had the brake in there's the balance you can adjust you've got the brake size you can adjust from i think small standard and uh high i think you've also got the balance there for the anti-roll bars the ride height could be adjusted as well and the gearbox you could always adjust the gear ratios and your engine units of course you're only allowed eight engines for the whole of the season and of course the famous tow and camber which one you just put to the left and the other one you just put fully to the right because that's how we roll on these formula one games okay here's your tire selection you only had option and prime as you can see we've currently got a set of prime tires on 100 percent because they haven't gone out yet and as you can see that white band around the outside that will slowly wear down as you uh, put more laps onto those tires as you can also see you only get a certain amount of tires that you can go out in each session the rest are all shaded out and you can't select them of course that is uh, as to the rules for f1 2011 so that's basically it we just look across the garage there and see what else we can see our teammate has already gone out for a practice run as you can see we're just looking around now and it's time to go out on the circuit so I haven't played this game for um, absolutely bloody ages. <laughs> um, I think uh, the last save I've got on here says 2012. And I think apart from if I've done any odd videos about this game, that's probably been the last time since I actually uh, sat down and played it properly. So it's been a few years. Let's go out now and see exactly what the hand leads like. and. Oh my goodness, even with 6.6 six wings I have to say it does feel very much and I'm on a standard PS3 pad by the way as well, no steering wheels for me and I have to say it does feel very very floaty in the steering, it does seem to be uh, very very easy to spin out although I have to say it also seems very very planted onto the track as well so it seems to be a bit of a balancing act where you can actually get it to uh, go to the edge of spinning out or not but over and all it doesn't feel too bad of course this car is a HRT and he's basically a complete load of crap as you can see there's DRS but there are no curves because of course I think it was was it three of the teams in 2011 they didn't have the curves technology for their cars which was a bit of a massive disadvantage you have to say when all the other teams could run it but no so yeah it's not bad this car but it is uh, a very back marker car as you can see so that's it basically there's your career mode you just carry on going until you get a good car and hopefully you will win the world championship before not too much into the five-year career that is offered in this game okay so to the right hand side of course you've got your rev counter and all the other controls showing you your speed and the drs and the curves and of course there you've got your um, display that tells you the condition of your car at the moment we're looking at the tires and you can see they are nice and green it's also got an indicator for the brakes as well because as I go into the brakes there you'll see that just started to glow a little bit orange there you see that the brakes just and then they go back to normal again it's very very impressive indeed and of course it tells you how much fuel you got in the car and what mixture you're on of course you can go into rich mix standard or lean mix in this game okay let's move on now and see how long it takes for the pit crew to recover us because if you play f1 2016 it takes for bloody ever at least half an hour but here we go let's see how long it takes now oh well i'd have to say that's very bloody quick isn't it but of course they don't have to jack the car up and put it on trolleys that they do in 2016 
of course they just backed it into the pit garage in 2011 and look there we go we're ready to go out again once more fantastic so if we look at the tyres you can see that the uh, white band has gone down a little bit to say that we have some wear and we're down to 88% on those prime tyres. Okay now we go to the teams and drivers in 2011 we had Red Bull with Sebastian Vettel and Mark Webber. Vodafone McLaren Mercedes was Lewis Hamilton and Jensen Button. We then moved on to the next team in F1 2011 and it was Ferrari of course with Fernando Alonso and Felipe Massa. Then on to Mercedes which was Michael Schumacher and Nico Rosberg. Then on to Lotus Renault which was Nick Heidfeld and Vitaly Petrov. Our next team in F1 2011 was Williams with Rubens Barrichello and Pasta Maldonado. Then on to Force India which had Adrian Sutil and Paul De Resta. Then we went on to Sauber which had Kamui Kobayashi and Sergio Perez. Then on to Scuderia Toro Rosso with Sebastian Buemi and Jamie Algaswari. And then on to the next team which was Team Lotus with Heike Kovalainen and Jarno Trulli. Then on to the next team, HRT of course, with Narain Kartakeyan and Vit Antonio Luizzi. And finally, was it finally? It's Marussia Virgin Racing with Timo Glock and Germain D'Ambrosio. <laughs> wow. So on to my favourite part of the show, yes, it's the damage model. I mean, um, Sebastian Vettel's awesome Red Bull of 2011 as the five lights go out and it's time once more to say go 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 and away we go straight away into the rich mix and we're going to go into turn two and straight away i'm going to forget to bloody break again as you can see let's see how many cars i can take out oh shitty bollocks uh oh i i missed anyway let's have another go now and see oh straight into mark weber mark weber oh my god my teammate no mark i'm so sorry i didn't mean to do that i really didn't multi 21 said multi 21 oh my goodness i'm sorry look i'll see if i can get you going again oh wait a minute he's disappeared oh shit anyway let's see what we can do now let's see where we can take it oh my god look at that into outer space i believe i can fly I believe I can touch the sky I think about it every night and day Spread my wings and fly away so in summary, is this game worth buying? Well, I have to say, I still think this is possibly the worst game in the F1 series from Codebusters, at least for the PlayStation 3 anyway. But if you're a petrol head, you're still going to lap this game up for many hours to come. It had a few bugs in it when it first came out. Of course, in the career mode, you couldn't actually get past the Japanese Grand Prix, which was a little bit of a problem. But thankfully, they brought out a patch which fixed that pretty darn quickly. So... Feel free to pick up another slice of F1 Gaming Pie. Thanks so much for watching everyone. There will of course be more later.
Thank you.